Day number four of harvest. We're starting out with the bowl of food. So here we go. Day number four of soybean harvest. We are 13% done with soybeans. We have 130 out of 1,000 acres of soybeans done. If all goes well today, we should be 25% done. Weather-wise today, they're talking full sunlight, 86 degrees with a nice little breeze. Today we got the brown on brown. Well, the, the three different browns right here. This is supposed to be stylish. And we got the lace-up boots, so I feel more sophisticated. And for a shirt today, we're rocking the new Corn Star Farm shirt. These things are super stinking cool. If you want to get one for yourself, check out the link in the description description or we have it right here we have this one we got the, the small in the corner we got stuff on the back we got a whole bunch of different designs it's really cool just go check it out for yourself hey 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 now who took my rock from right here yesterday dad said that the drive over backhoe conveyor was running slow for whatever reason so he called kevin from agi backhoe what is your official title territory sales rep for eastern iowa for AGI? Yes. Okay, territory sales rep in Eastern Iowa for AGI. He <laughs> called him up and he's gonna come out and look at this and then dad said he's unloading a semi this morning and then all of a sudden that auger decides it was just gonna stop and then this just kicks on another gear and this starts running fast when this stops. So, now they're trying to fix that. Good morning, Freightliner. Wow, we already have air. Cooper fixed the leaky airline on this semi because you would lose all your air pressure once you shut it off in like five minutes and then it would take like another five to build back up. So now that that's fixed, we don't have any leaking air at all. We have full pressure already and he put a new radio antenna on top so our radio actually works now. Looks like we got Presley's crew starting here. He's got the green car parked in Oak Orleans driveway. Good morning, Mary Lou's and good morning, equipment. <laughs> Mary Lou's farm is a quarter mile wide and it's an entire mile long. So we come in off the road right there. We sneak all the way through here. We follow along those trees. Then we go all the way up to the horizon over there. So we got about maybe 10 acres left right on that hillside. And then we got to go on the other side of the combine. We have what we call the CRP chunk of the farm. So right down there at the bottom, you can see Cooper's doing a little bit of mowing with the bat wing down there. But we got that chunk of CRP. There's like 20 acres over there. Once we get that done, we will be done with the field we call the south side of Mary Lou's, and then we will jump to the north side of Mary Lou's, which is right there. Ah, come here. <laughs> Always on the wrong side of the dust. Gotta check the oil. Oh, that window's getting a little dirty. Ah, we'll be okay. Turn on our Ag Leader in Command 1200 monitor. Any second now. There we go. Every time, I always forget this. Last night my sickle stopped working right there. We got a nice drag mark, so hopefully here we go. So far, so good. All right, there we go. Now before we get into going too crazy, we need to crack some pods, see if they're splitting open. Mm. A little tough, actually. When we crack a pod, we simply just pull it off. You can do it on the plant too. But then I'm just gonna roll it in my fingers. And it should split right in that spine right there. Which, right here, you can see how it opens up a little bit, but it takes a little bit of force. So that's number one. We need the pods to crack open. Number two, we need to look at the moisture of the beans. We do that by what's called the bite test, where it's gonna put it right between our teeth and bite. It should crack in half. Right here, it just kind of mushed. So that one's a little too wet. Try two more. That one cracked. Lightly crack. Okay. All right, these are getting close. We're just gonna give it a half an hour. Hopefully it's about 80 degrees out already and the wind's blowing nice, so it won't be long at all. We'll be able to start pushing some soybeans. So then, I guess we might as well practice some Spanish. Sí, yo están comiendo pasta y hablando. Lee, ¿cómo puedes odiar la playa? No sabes nadar. That said, Lee and Young are eating pasta and talking. Lee. How can you hate the beach? You don't know how to swim? And it's asking, Lee does not like the beach. A Lee no le gusta la playa. The computer we have between our brains is incredible. Alright, it's been about 25 minutes. We're gonna give it another look. I'm getting itchy. Well, not like physically itchy, but itchy to go. And I just found a ginormous rock. We have hit that thing for an extremely long time. Wow. Oh, it's cracking better. Cracked. 
Correct. We're gonna hop in the combine and make a round, see what our moisture test is saying. It's gotta be close. It's a little wet, it's looking like. I'd like to be under 15, though. Oh, I guess we're gonna wait a little longer. We waited another 20 minutes. It seems like the breeze has picked up quite a bit. It's definitely a lot warmer out. It just went and cracked more, and it seems like it's more promising. And I think I forgot to turn my monitor off when I shut the combine off and it's frozen. We'll give the beans another two minutes to dry here quick. Okay, we are now at 14, low 14. We're going for it. It's just gonna keep getting drier from here. We're mowing along well. This is the last little bit on the 10 acres of the main field. And once we go about 50 more feet, then we're headed over to the CRP. Now the tricky part is to get over to the CRP, we either have to go up on the road, which I don't want to take the head off and it's probably too wide to be going over the top of a hill because the driveway is right at the top of the hill. Or the other way in is we have to go through this waterway that has some spots in that are pretty deep, some spots that are wet. I'm not really sure where they are. We're in a four wheel drive tracked machine. We're just gonna go for it. I'm pretty sure this is where we've crossed in the past. And I'm doing this so that way I mow it and then I know where to go later. I don't know where that waterway is at. It's over there somewhere. We're just going for it. I don't think there's anything I can hit up here. So it's more or less, I'm just gonna miss the edge of the waterway. the auger, throttle it up. This is our first dump over in the CRP. Big beans over here, wow. Wow. I think it's about time for another meal. If I can find my zipper right here. Got stuff packed in thermoses today. This holds an entire meal's worth, but it literally could not fit one more spoonful in this. It was perfect amount. The only problem I'm running into is I cannot fit this inside of the cup holder. Too big. We got some rice, some hamburger, some eggs, and carrots. All right, there's the last little bit of the CRP. All right, we're done with the south side of Mary Lou's. All of that is Mary Lou's. You can see where my auto steer wasn't working there and I had to do it by hand. It goes way all the way back there to those trees on top of the hill. It's kind of interesting looking at the yield map as well. So the darker green parts are above the average. So everything that's dark green did above 56 bushels per acre. Everything that's kind of like a yellow, that's 56. And anything that's red is below. So pretty interesting. If I'm not mistaken, this thing has Bluetooth on it. Yeah, right there. I'm gonna figure out how to connect up to that. I'm gonna try to just drive this across the road if we can. It takes about 10 minutes to go over to the trailer, get it set off, get it unhooked, drive it 100 feet across the road, and then rehook back up. So, we just, we're being lazy right now. I'll, I'll be completely honest. We're, we're trying to take the easy way out of here and just drive across the road. And this head is wide. I'm literally hitting the ditch on that side, or just about, and I'm about hitting the ditch on that side. We just took out that tree. Bye-bye tree. Okay, there we go, that's better. Now we got more room. Cooper's blocking the hill up there. Nobody's blocking the hill behind me. I'm not liking that, so I'm wanting to get to the bottom of this one as fast as I can. We don't have a driveway anywhere down here. It's all the way up over there, so not the most convenient. I'm running along in first gear right now. I could stop and shift into second, but by the time I stop, let it shift, take off, and able to go three miles per hour faster, I'm probably net lost time versus just staying at five and not stopping. We have a lot of little trees on the side of the road I'm just now noticing. Oh, let's see what we can do. That pulls low enough over there. It looks like we got an old cutter bar stuck in the ground on the right side. Put that over there. We are over the bar. Oh, barely. Before we get started, let's shift back into second gear, and then we need to pop the monitor over to a different field. Mary Lou's North. Okay, here we go. Planted this field with the deer, and it's not going to give me my files for where I planted what hybrids or varieties. Okay, we'll just have to accept. We have no idea how this really got bent. I'm guessing it was maybe a tree branch that's sticking out, but I, when I think about it, I don't really feel like it got up in there that far. This would have got bent if it would have, because this would have hit it first. Good. Mm, that 
out again. It did the same thing it did to me last night, where I was just going along and then my sickle just completely stopped. Well, that would probably be why. Piece fence post. I found it. Yeah, we got half a cart off this so far. That auger gets awfully close. Finally, young sir, tell me how I'm supposed to see that edge over there. You can't. Thank goodness for auto steer. I, I literally can't see over there. There's a line of trees to our left by about 50 feet. Like a whole line of trees. With this dust, I could, literally could not see the ground. Either we got a broken sickle here or we were just pushing. Hopefully we were just pushing. Looking good. I told you, there was a whole row of trees over there and you couldn't even see it. We're close enough to the semi. Cooper's gonna run back and grab the impact out of the fuel trailer. We really need to carry it in the combine. That would be much more time effective. Try this again! Okay. Try it again. up in that corner so there's kind of some trash up there it is the frost and stuff has just been pushing it out of the ground so if we make it up there tonight we will and otherwise as Cooper said we'll just deal with that tomorrow we do have a trial on this field with some high management stuff so right in the middle basically over my shoulder once we get in probably seven or eight rounds then we'll be kind of getting into that it's gonna be interesting because we have a check on this side of the field then we have a check all the way on the other side and I am but we did it right in the middle, so that way we could see true apples to apples. Did it do better on this side of the field as well as that side of the field? Because sometimes if you just pick one side of the field, maybe that side of the field got rain, or maybe it's a different soil type or something. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to be making it to the end right here as much as I would like to. Big fan of that scoreboard display from Unverfirth. That's the light, or not the light, that is the weight that the scale is reading right now. So Cooper can see it on his monitor in the cab right there. But then I can also see it here. I really like that because sometimes if people struggle to fill semis and know when to shut things off, I can just do it from here. I can just get it up to 50,000 pounds and then I can stop putting on it. And then I just say, hey, go empty the whole cart. Cooper, dad and I have basically been farming literally our entire lives. So we understand how to do that kind of stuff. But sometimes if you have somebody helping who maybe hasn't ever ran a grain cart before and you have them in there and you're trying to explain to them how to fill a semi and they don't really understand it and then you get up there and you have a semi that is completely front to back or it's like 60% full and they think it's full. Something like that is a, a major player in making sure that we're more efficient getting loads out of the field and then also making sure that we're not overweight or underweight. Ultimately makes us more efficient. <laughs> Potentially have another sickle. Try this again. <laughs> I kind of wonder if I just put a skunk inside the combine or I don't know. Oh my, I can taste it. <laughs> it literally feels like I have a rotten onion right in front of my face, cut open. And it's staying in the cab. I've been going, this, it's been here like a minute. Oh my goodness, this smells a lot better out here. Woo. Oh yeah, I smell that stuff down here. Yikes. I potentially have another missing sickle. We're about to find out. These bolts right here must be weak or something in this batch because we have lost four sickles today and I don't think I've really ever had that happen. Usually they break, not like this bolt actually breaking. Cooper's about had enough of it. Try it again here. 
Rotor on, head on. There it goes. Must just had enough junk in there. The dust is blowing away quick. We actually have a fairly decent breeze yet. It's warm out. We don't have any dew setting in yet. I did slow down a little bit. I noticed my loss monitor. I was starting to get a little bit more chaffer loss, my top sieve, and then I was also getting a little bit more rotor loss, but when I slowed down, it seemed like that went away. So we're gonna try to finish this field. I think we got like 12 acres left. So we're just about done. We just got a little sliver right there. There we have it. We got done with the north side of Mary Lou's. We are 25% done with soybean harvest. It's midnight now. We actually had a pretty decent running day. We've had a couple little breakdowns of some sickles and stuff popping off and just like the sickle randomly stopping. Well, not randomly, but stuff getting wedged in it, which is not really a common thing for us. So for not getting started till one o'clock, we've been moving. trailer and get the combine all fueled up we burned through half a tank today and that way in the morning we'll just be all completely ready to go because we're ready to go to Winona's next oh this was kind of interesting looking at the map my test area was basically right from that finger to kind of where we are right now so everything in between right here which has the most green and went all the way to the back of the field there so like under the AC an acre straight down and then like under the zero, straight down. And then everything on the sides wasn't. So I'll have to tighten up the numbers on what my thing is here and then we'll be able to know a little bit more. So let's go like a three bushel spacing. Well, the dark greens is right where I had my thing. And look at that, got one right to the line. That's literally right where I ended my thing. So I'll know more once I actually get it on the computer and get more data with it that it takes like 50 foot squares from yield map on the monitor and then we can pull it in a little tighter but preliminary i mean i, I think there's some promise there regarding the skunk situation i don't know if my nose is just immune to it now so i don't smell it anymore or if the smell actually went away just being downwind of the combine i can definitely smell that so i think it's just not as in in the cab as much maybe I hope. It's been a good day so far. Burned probably 150 gallons of diesel or better in the combine today. We were at just under half a tank, so we put some work in. Oh, we're gonna put this back in. We're gonna try and sit on the golf clubs. We got a full moon tonight. Look how light it is out. Whew. Here's the moon. Good morning, Freightliner. I can say it's morning because it actually is. Well, there's the lights. I love the lights in this cab. The red underglow right there. <laughs> I think we put a different light. That's like a trailer light. <laughs> I didn't listen to the radio at all today. Maybe for about five seconds while I was trying to mess with the Bluetooth and I couldn't get it to go. So I think on the way home, I'm gonna listen to the radio. One thing that's a little challenging around this time of year where we're just running long hours, we're either getting started early in the morning or running late at night. It's hard to get a training session in. I would like to train, but it's about one o'clock in the morning. I still need to eat and shower. So if I go train, it's gonna be like 3.30 in the morning before I'm getting in bed, which morning comes quick when that's the case. And in, in, in my opinion, if you're sleeping that little, like I, I used to do it for several years. I'd get like three hours a night and it got to a point where I'd wake up in the morning and my heart rate was 120 beats per minute as soon as I sat up, when normally my rate's like 60. And that was the moment I was like, ah, I should probably make a change. And so I continued to do the same thing for like another year. And then my three hours went to five. And five has been the commonality my entire 20s. So I'm really trying to get up to that eight. That, that is definitely where it's at. Cause in my opinion, you're stepping over dollars to pick up nickels when you're not sleeping because your body needs to recover and it needs to fix itself so for me sometimes i kind of i don't know if it's really a battle in my head but i kind of go back and forth with a little bit because i when i'm trying to accomplish something big i work a lot of hours and i work really late at night and i often get up early and so when that happens i'm cutting out workouts and like I tend to prioritize working over working out. 
And so then that makes me think, well, am I just basically justifying working so that way I don't have to work out? Like that's kind of my escape goat to get out of not working out. And it's kind of the excuse I make in my head, or at least th that's what I ask myself. Am I making that an excuse? And I was listening to a Jordan Peterson podcast and he was talking about kind of what he does with his clients when, who want to basically do something different than what they're currently doing. And he said, I'm fine with you doing something different as long as it is equally hard, if not harder than what you're currently doing, then that is not an scapegoat to doing something else. So I look at the work I'm doing as it is just as hard, if not harder, maybe not directly physically, but from a mental perspective and physically exerting myself to get the activity done. It's more hours, it's more work, it's more mental wear, strain, wear and tear. So I'm justifying this as like, okay, when I am legitimately doing something like this, the work is okay to be done and I'm not skipping my workout because I actually want to do the workout, it's more. That is kind of my reward for getting the activities done that need to be done in order to get a step closer to the goal that I'm trying to achieve. And here we go. For supper, we got five and a half ounces of ground beef, and then we got 450 grams or one and a half cups of cooked rice. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on it. Got some Himalayan pink salt. Got that plate done. Next up, we got our baked potato. Fun fact, there's 40% more potassium in a potato than there is in a banana. That's what we're getting here, our potassium. Potato down, Greek yogurt, frozen berries. Wait a second, I can't believe I almost forgot my carrots. Oh boy, that comes around quicker than I would like it to. All right, that's day number four in the books. 